Hey everybody and welcome to a new video on e Play Art. In today's video we're going to be giving thanks. It is that time of year when friends and family and co-workers are all getting together and you know just saying thank you uh, especially for this year when I think that will be a really big deal. I would like to celebrate that right here. Um, I've already gridded out my five by seven piece on my black paper but before I get started on that, I obviously want to do a little bit of a mini sketch to kind of figure out what I actually want to do for the real thing. So let's get started, shall we? So I have my sketch and now it's time to put a pencil to the actual paper and create this piece. I've been getting into doing cards and sentiments and everything lately. Um, I don't know, maybe it's what's in the air and the atmosphere, everything going on, who knows. But um, I think especially this year, um, Saying thank you to people you truly appreciate is, you know, really, truly important. Because sometimes you just want to know that, you know, you're, you're important and what you do uh, is important. Whether it's work or just, you know, being a friend, um, anything. It never hurts to tell people that you care about them and just say thank you. I don't think you can have enough curly cues in, <laughs> in uh, sentiment artwork. Rulers of course can be your friend when you're drawing um, as well as stencils. Uh, I have this Crayola protractor that I don't even know how old this thing is. I've had it for so long. Uh, I love it. It is essential. It has to be at my art desk. Um, I've used it so much. It's got the protractor on it and obviously some different um, circle to make your perfect circles. And then uh, not too long ago, maybe about a year ago or so, um, I kind of slightly upgraded and got this um, circle stencil from Michaels. Uh, that way it has a lot more variety of circles. But these are very handy items uh, to use when you're drawing if you want to do perfect circles. Are they necessary? No, but um, they never hurt. Okay, so I have my initial sketch done and now it is about adding the color. Just wanna kinda go over the thanks with this white Prisma color. I think I'm gonna go back over it with a Posca marker to really make the white pop. Because I'm gonna, eventually I'm gonna cut this out, so. Not worried about anything outside of my box here. I just thought it's not digging in too much. Always a good idea just to put um, something in between your paper, especially if I'm I'm like trying to dig into the paper to really get the color in there. And I don't want my indentations to go to the next sheet. So put something like a big piece of cardstock in between just to kind of negate that. Mm. 
know people usually use only more warm um, tones for fall and autumn things, but you can get a little bit of, you know, lighter tones in there, like this green, which is a little, I am using like warmer tones of green, but I mean, there's still green around even in the fall. Just not as much. I'm trying to figure out what to make the bigger dots. If I do, maybe I'll do a couple of a couple of these in red. I'm not a big fan of the color red. I'm more of a cool toned person. I like the blues and the purples. Those are my favorite type of colors. was going to do this in um, white, you know, white background, but then, I don't know, I just thought it might be interesting to do it on a black background, sort of almost like a chalkboard sort of feel. Oh no! Oh no! Back on it. Ooh. Where did the disaster? Seriously, if you're on the fence about getting some of these Prismacolor uh, colored pencils, don't hesitate. They're wonderful. I've used them, uh, honestly, I've just used them a handful of times, but I'm satisfied every time I use them. Um, they're so creamy and the colors are really, really nice. I'm just kind of going back in and just blending the stem a little bit with the color the leaf uh, it still stands out as the other color but just to blend it in a bit more have to go back over this again just to I may not um, we'll see when it dries see how light it dries and then I may not have to go back over it because like you can see a little bit as it's kind of drying we can see a little bit of the black coming through so I might have to go back over okay I'm gonna let this dry and then see if I need to go back over it again to make the white pop out a bit more. All right, I've let the Posca dry, so now I'm gonna go back over it again. And I want it to be a little bit brighter. I'm also going in and erasing some of my um, pencil lines that I can see. To be honest, the first time I used Posca pens, I know uh, I'd heard a lot of people really like them. And the first time I used them, I did not see what all the hype was about. I was a little disappointed. And as I've continuously used them for different projects or uh, off and on for different things, I'm starting to begin, <laughs> I'm starting to see what the hype is. Uh, I really like them. I need to get a finer set. I thought the medium, the, um, what is this, the PC3M set would be the size I would want to use the most, but I think I've learned um, after I have started using them that I would probably prefer the fine nib uh, more than this size. I mean, the medium is fine for um, some things. I used it for a craft project I did not too long ago for Halloween and the medium was perfect but I think the fine sized nib would be ideal and I have a couple that are the fine size nibs and uh, I can definitely you have a little bit more control um, especially you can fine-tune your details I think a little bit more than you can with this larger size. If nothing else, I definitely need to get the white 
color and uh, the different size nibs the fine and maybe I think there's an extra fine too so I might need to get both of those <laughs> also never underestimate a white colored pencil on black paper and to bring a little bit of bling into this I presented these um, metallic watercolors in a previous video that I will link here uh, if you want to check it out where I did um, a mosaic using the metallic watercolors um, I highly recommend getting some if you enjoy watercolor or metallics or any kind of painting they're so shiny and you just get excited putting them on the paper and probably even more so on this black paper they just pop okay so now I'm gonna sit this aside for a second and let it dry out uh, to make sure all the watercolors dry before um, I put my lines back in and cut this out in the meantime I'm going to get my backing sheet cut that out so it'll be ready to go when this is dry all right so I've rifled through all of my scrapbooking paper and found this beautiful kind of burnt orange little um, rustic orange color and so I'm going to use this as the backing of my uh, card piece that I just did. Um, FYI you don't have to use scrapbooking paper for scrapbooking. You can use it for other um, artistic endeavors as well. I've used it in a couple pieces as well such as this Game of Thrones inspired piece that I did. Um, I'll link it up here if you want to see how I created this. Uh, but yeah, I use scrapbooking paper for the back of this. Um, but yeah, you can use it for all sorts of different arts, crafts, all kinds of different things, not just for scrapbooking. All right, so I'm going to cut this down to the size I need it to be, and then uh, we'll go from there. my backing piece ready to go and you might can see it from this angle this has a little bit of a texture to it it's a little smoother on this side but this is the side I'm going to use with the texture on it so I have um, torn out my page out of the black drawing sketchbook and by the way if you wanted to know what black paper this is it is the Canson black drawing paper but just in case you want to know what paper I was using there the final piece in these wonderful warm autumn tones uh, I really like how this turned out especially with the little pops of metallic on it uh, also it is a reminder to give thanks this holiday weekend to all those special people around you and I want to give thanks to all of my new subscribers over the past couple of years thank you so much you have really inspired me and pushes me to make uh, new content for you guys to watch and I hope you enjoy what I am doing. Of course I'd love to thank you guys for tuning in to another one of my videos. If you are uh, liking this content please feel free to give it a nice thumbs up down below. Also if you want to know about new videos when they are coming out on the channel you can hit the notification bell or the red subscribe button which is somewhere down here and of course you can always follow more of my artistic journey on Instagram or Twitter at E Stampley Art. As always, I want to thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye!